Use memo takes two things: a callback function and a dependency array. I'm just gonna say callback. I'm gonna call it CB callback and a dependency array, which I'm gonna call depths. So I'm gonna replace this use custom memo. And moment of truth, let's try to test our app. Can you create your own use memo hook? This was the question that I was asked in one of my recent front-end interviews. And trust me, I had no idea how to do that. But still, I managed to clear that interview. Let's see how I did that and how you can do that as well. Okay, so first of all, let's see what use memo hook is all about. So I'm gonna go to Google and search use memo. And let's open the official React documentation. So it says that use memo is a React hook that lets you cache the result of calculation between re-renders. So it simply means that when a component re-renders, if there is any expensive calculation, we can cache that. We can save that so that we don't calculate that again. Let's see an example and understand how use memo exactly works. So I open code sandbox over here and I'm going to create a new React.js sandbox. And also if you're asked to implement any such thing in React or maybe JavaScript, the very first thing that you should do is try to replicate its real world use case first and then try to implement its custom implementation. So over here, simply what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all of this code and create a simple counter example. I'll just have a h2 where I'll say counter. And after this, I'm going to keep the value of counter by default. I'm going to put it to zero for now. After that, I'm going to have a button which will say increment. Whenever I click on this increment, this counter should increase. So, okay, I'm going to create a state for this. So I'm going to use use state hook. Const, I'm going to call this state counter. And for changing the state, I'm going to take set counter. And simply on click, what this will do is on click. It will say set counter, counter plus one. That's all. And Obviously, I'm going to render my counter over here. And also, our counter will be zero by default. So, yep, if I click on increment, yep, it's going to simply increment our counter. So, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a function over here called squared value. And inside of this function, what I'm going to do, I'm going to say return counter into counter. Now, you can consider this over here as an expensive calculation. Now, obviously, this is not uh, much of an expensive calculation right now, but let's suppose a scenario where this function over here is doing some expensive calculation. And for our case, I'm just taking counter into counter, right? So simply what I'm going to do, I'll just uh, below this, I'll say squared counter and just provide this squared value function and call this over here. So whenever we click on increment, you can see the squared counter is also being calculated over here as well. And you know what, I'm just going to put a console log over here, expensive calculation. So now, whenever we click on this increment, you can see this expensive calculation is getting fired off as well. Okay, that's fine. But what if I create another counter over here? So, okay, right below this button, I'm going to replicate this whole thing. I'm going to create uh, another counter called counter2, set counter2. By default, it will be 100. I'm going to basically subtract from this counter. So I'll just say counter 2 over here. And on click, set counter 2 will do counter 2 minus 1. So it's just reducing 1 from it. And now notice, if I click on this decrement button, this is not getting affected, right? So it shouldn't re-render basically, or this shouldn't get fired off, right? So if I click on decrement, you can see this expensive calculation is getting fired off again because this whole component over here is getting re-rendered because this state is changing and we don't want that. When we have an expensive calculation over here, we don't want it to recalculate again and again. That will put the pressure on our memory and it's gonna unnecessarily fire off this expensive calculation. And also if you don't uh, really understand what how this re-render and all is working, this is a completely different topic on how React works. If you want me to create a video on how React works in depth, just let me know in the comments down below and I'll create a complete video. But for now, you need to understand that whenever a state changes in React or in a React component, the whole component gets re-rendered, especially functions like these. So how do we tackle this situation? We can use a hook called use memo hook. So use memo hook is basically used to memoize the expensive calculation or as we saw over here, that lets you cache the result of the calculation between re-renders. So 
simply what we need to do over here use memo takes two things a calculate value that is a callback function and the dependencies all right so what we have to do we have to wrap this whole function or uh, simply what i can do over here and say const memoized squared value and inside of it i'm going to say use memo and it's going to take two things one is this callback and other is the array of dependencies let me just close this now what is this dependency array all about so this dependency array says that only fire off this function when the items inside of this dependency array changes so if i just take this also one more thing the use memo calls this function and returns us a value it doesn't returns us a function it returns us a value so we can just take this over here and replace this squared value with our memoized squared value so i'm going to clear this and if i click on increment you can see nothing is happening right now because our dependency array is empty but as soon as we put this counter variable inside of it now notice and click on increment you're going to see this is getting incremented that's the normal behavior but what if we try to decrement our counter number 2 so i'll just uh, you know add 2 over here as well yeah so if you try to decrement this shouldn't get fired off now so if you click on decrement you're going to see this expensive calculation console log is not getting fired off no matter how many times we re-render this component by changing this state so that is what use memo hook is all about now let's see how we can go on and implement our custom use memo hook to achieve the same results if you're preparing for your front end interview and you would like me to help you in your front end interview preparation just click the link in the description down below and book a one on one call with me we're going to discuss tips tricks i'm going to give you a lot of resources i'm going to design a proper road map tailored to your situation which is going to help you out a lot in your front end interview preparation so click the link in the description down below and book a one on one call with me so simply i'm just going to go over here and create a new folder called hooks because we want to keep everything organized inside of our app so inside of this hooks uh, hook folder i'm going to get a new file use custom memo .js so first of all now we have understood how use memo hook exactly works and what its function is all about it basically preserving the last value of our squared value function and it's only changing it whenever this counter is getting updated now how do you create a custom hook a lot of people when they see uh, okay they have to create a custom hook they get scared that okay how am i going to do that but it's simple it's just a function it's just a normal function which starts with keyword use so i'll just say const use and you can give whatever name that you want so i'm just going to say custom memo and this is going to be a function over here now first thing first use memo takes two things that we already saw a callback function and a dependency array so i'm just going to say callback i'm going to call it cb callback and a dependency array which i'm going to call depths and now inside of this we need to do a couple of things first of all we need to have a variable or a state where we can store the cached value then we're going to compare changes in our dependencies and then whenever we unmount our component that is whenever we let's say close this uh, counter or whatever we need to clean our use memo as well so we need to add clean up logic and obviously simply in the end we need to return the memoized value all right let's start with the first step so first of all we need a variable or a state where we can store our cached value now think about it if we took a normal variable then it will be lost when our component will get re-rendered right so we don't want that what if we take use state to manage our state it will again get lost if let's say our component gets unmounted or whatever it's going to get lost so what is the best way, uh, way to do that you may have guessed it right we're going to use refs that is we're going to use use ref hook to store our value so i'm going to take use ref now i'm going to give you a brief introduction to what use ref is but if you want a more in depth video on use ref just let me know in the comments down below and i'm going to come up with that video so i'm going to take a variable called memoized ref now what basically use ref does is whatever you store inside of a use ref its memory is persistent throughout the life cycle of that particular component no matter how many times you re-render that component the value of use ref will still be persistent so if we you know let's say hover on it the return object will persist for the full lifetime of the component that is we won't lose the value in what whatever we keep inside of use ref now after this we need to compare the changes in our dependency also before doing this i would like to mention that you can see how i am tackling one part of this 
problem at one time. A lot of people, they get overwhelmed during these interview rounds and they think that, okay, I'll have to think of the complete logic in one go. But don't worry about that. Just try to create a roadmap for yourself. How are you going to do that? And then sequentially try to solve one problem at one time. So right now, I need to store it in some state or variable and I figured out that. Now I need to figure out how am I going to identify the changes in the dependency. So obviously, I'm going to have an if. Inside this if, I'm going to write the logic for it. So I'm just going to say changes logic for now and if this is true if the dependencies have been changed then simply what i will do i'll say memoize ref dot current because that is where we store everything inside of a ref we need to use dot current variable dot current equals i'm going to store two things inside of it a value this, this is basically our cache right so i'm going to store two things first is the previous value so value will be this callback so i'm gonna call this callback over here and also i'm gonna store the previous dependency so that we can compare during the next iteration so i'll say depths simply now over here in the changes logic i'm gonna compare these previous depths to our new depths so if i remove this so first of all we're gonna check is there something inside of this use ref dot current if there is nothing inside of use ref dot current then obviously this is the first time that we are encountering this use memo hook so we anyways we need to do the calculation so i'm going to check if not memoized ref dot current if there is nothing inside of this then obviously we need to do the calculation right or we're going to compare our dependencies the old dependencies that is the dependencies inside of the cache or memoized ref and the new dependencies so i'll create a function over here r equal and i'm going to pass two things to it first our memoized ref dependency so memoized ref dot current dot depths this and our current depths that is this dependencies okay and obviously this function doesn't exist yet and i'm gonna put not equal if they are not equal only then compare it because if they are equal then we don't need to do any calculation we can just return the previous value all right so okay i'm gonna create this function over here const r equal and so we'll take two things previous depths and next depths so first of all again i'm going to compare over here is there anything inside of this previous depths previous depths is equals to null if it's null then we don't want to do anything which is going to return false that is they're not equal else i'm going to compare the length of both of these dependencies because if you see this is an array right so we need to compare is the length equal then we can you know do further comparison if length itself is not equal then obviously they these dependencies are unequal and we need we need to return the false so if previous depths dot length is not equals to next depths dot length then simply return false now to this we're going to check each and every dependency so instead of our for loop i'm going to say i equals zero i less than previous depths dot length i plus plus we're gonna iterate through our previous depths this will be let i equals zero instead of it i'm gonna say if previous depths of i is not equals to next depths of i then return false if not if this doesn't work out i'm gonna say return in the end so we have compared each individual dependency of these two arrays. And if this whole loop gets completed, then we're going to return false. Else, if they don't match, they're going to automatically return as false. Now, continuing. So that's done. We have compared the changes in dependencies. And let's uh, return this first. Then we're going to write our cleanup logic. So just simply, we can return. Wh what does it return? It returns the value, right? So memoize, memoize ref dot current dot value inside of our cleanup logic as you may know in use effect hook how do we see if a component is unmounted so this is how we write a use effect hook right and empty dependencies to fire it off in its first mount so inside of use effect let me just import use effect first to clean up our component we return a callback like this and whenever our component is unmounted that is our component is removed from our dom we can just simply say memoize ref dot current equals null easy 
and also I'm going to put this null over here as well as an initial value, right? So yeah, that is what our use memo hook is all about. This is the custom implementation of use memo hook. Let's go on and test this out in our app. So I'm going to export this as well. So export default use custom memo. So, okay. Now, if you're enjoying this tutorial up until this point, open your Instagram app right now and search roadside coder and hit that follow button as hard as you can because I'm very active on Instagram. And if you have any doubts any queries or just a normal message, you can ping me on Instagram for this. So go on, do it. I'm waiting. What? I'm, I'm being serious over here. Open your Instagram app right now and follow me there. Oh, you've already done it. Okay, let's let's move on with this video. Let's go back to our app.js and I'm gonna replace this use custom memo. Yeah, let's import it over here. Let's get rid of this use memo. And moment of truth, let's try to test our app. I'm gonna clean this console and click on increment. Okay, that's working fine as expected. But if we click on this decrement, oh, it's still getting fired off. That means something is off in our component. Let's go back and see. Um, oh, it's the spelling of length. I think now it should work. So if you click on increment, yep, that's working as expected. But when we click on this decrement, this should not get fired off. So if you click on this, yep, it's not getting fired off. Awesome. So we have successfully implemented our own custom implementation of use memo hook or the polyfill for use memo hook. Now, if you like this video, give this video a huge fat thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel for more such awesome interview videos. And if you'd like to see more such videos like this, click this card above my head to access the complete React interview questions playlist. And if you would like to book a one-on-one -on -one call with me, just click the link in the description down below.